Hello, this is Ibrahim Sajek speaking, and in this exercise, we're going to build a histogram. What I have here is some randomly generated data. I have 100 elements, and what I want to do is to build a histogram for this column data. So what I am doing in Minitab is I'm going to go to the menu graph, then select the tool histogram. I want a simple histogram just one variable so I'm going to press OK and the only thing I'm going to do is to select the graph variable that is data with a double click and I am pressing OK automatically what I obtain is the histogram of this column what I can see is that it is a right tail histogram this is the body of my histogram that is the most frequent values are going to be between a little bit like zero up to maybe six, maybe seven, and then, well, let's say six. And here I have the tail. This is a right tail with a low density that is just uh, low frequent data is appearing here. Now, as you can see, Minitab is automatically selecting the amount of bins or the amount of classes that it wants to use as you can see it is using 18 classes so probably what we want to do is to modify these classes in order to fit into more classes or less classes or even different kind of classes how we're going to do it i'm going to right click on the bars and then to select the menu edit bars this is going to help me to modify uh, the field pattern, the color, for example, the borders, so I can modify how the histogram looks. But on the last option, the one of binding, here I can show different kind of issues. For example, right now the midpoints or the class marks are being shown. Maybe what I want to show on the histogram are the cut points. If I press OK, just look carefully how this is modified and now I can see where the cut points are being located at. I still can imagine the same kind of histogram but now with a different perspective. Let me just modify it again. I'm going to the edit bars option by right clicking on binding and instead of selecting the automatic interval or number of intervals, I'm going to say that I do not want 18. I want a, let's say 10 intervals. So I press OK and what I'm going to see is that now my histogram looks shorter. I just have 10 different uh, bins but the shape of the histogram is the same. It's still right tailed and it's telling me the same idea. The only thing that happens is that the level of detail is changing. Now let's imagine that you want to use a Sturgis rule to select the number of data and that you want to define your own bins. Uh, let me just show you what are the statistics or the information for the data. I have 100 elements. This is the minimum. This is the maximum. Uh, what I'm doing is calculating the range. That is the maximum minus the minimum. And this is the range or the dispersion of my data. If I want to use the Sturgis rule, remember that this is the logarithm base 2 of the number of data. That is this 100 plus 1. When I round the result, it is telling me that I should be using 8 classes, not 18, but just 8, and that is close enough for giving me the information of my data. The class width will be the range divided by the number of classes is around 2.196. And what I am doing on this last uh, row is just building what are going to be the cut points of my classes. Look carefully how I start with this amount the minimum and then I am just adding the class width the minimum plus the class width gives me this value plus the class width gives me this value and so on so I'm gonna have the first class the second class the third class look how I am selecting the intervals the fourth the fifth the sixth the seventh and finally the eighth class. So I have eight classes as said before with these cut points. What I'm going to do is to copy this information in just one line. They are separated by spaces. I'm copying that information and I'm going back to my histogram. I'm going to right click on it and select the edit bars option. 
In binding again, instead of selecting the number of intervals I want to state, and carefully how I have the cut points selected, I want to state what are going to be my cut points. So I just paste those cut points, I say OK, and look carefully how my histogram changes. Now I have particular cut points that I defined according to my storage rule. Uh, however, the shape of the histogram is the same. Something important is that the histogram is a robust tool that will allow me to understand the distribution of data by different perspectives with different cut points, different midpoints, and different number of bins. Thank you so much for listening. See you later.